The second part that I want to talk about, and this is very important, I'll call it the challenges that students face when they go outside their country to study. So what are these challenges that our students do face when they go out to study? Number one, financial stress. I'll call it financial stress. For instance, self-funded students do experience uh, this stress. For example, sometimes there is no money at home and then you need to pay rent, you need to pay school fee, you need to study. And you know, like when you are studying and may, let's say you have a test to write, it is very realistic that when the stomach is empty, you cannot focus on your studies. So finance stress or financial stress is one of the problems that faces a lot of international students and this comes also let's say at home you are an international student in another country studying and then those who are at home are calling you hey bro send for me a certain amount you know you are outside there you are making life you are living a good life you know they are building up pressure on you even if you don't have money they will keep calling you if you are fine give them that amount okay but if you don't have just tell them that you don't have money. You don't have, just be realistic to them and tell them that there's no, there's no money. So financial stress is one of the problems that faces a lot of international students. So let's say you are coming from a country where English was being used as a medium of instruction and communication. But now you are changing to a country, let's say they are speaking Spanish or let's say German or you are going to Russia. My friend, you have to learn Russian or German or Spanish for you to be well equipped for your studies. And that's why initially at the application process, there are some countries just that will require you to attend the interviews to prove that you can speak their languages. And this test, I think they call it T T E O L or T O L, like test of English language, something like that. And it has a score. So if you score with a, uh, above a certain level, you will qualify to go and study. So it makes some students, let's say you are from Francophone countries which uses uh, French for their instructions and communication, and now you are coming to a country where they use English. So it makes these students to either first learn English, uh, go to English language school to learn English for let's say like a year or six months, and then they proceed with their classes. But if they go straight, if they don't have that background of English language, it makes them face difficulties during their studies. Oh, another problem facing international students uh, is adaptability. You know, there are some students who find it difficult to adapt to the environment. They are just like, you no, know, they just they like their own space. They don't want to socialize with other people. So it makes them face challenges like they coming from one area to another and this new area they find maybe they are alone they don't need to socialize with other people so it's very difficult and this one i'll just tell you like uh, you have to work on your social adjustment okay you have to interact with people so that you can adapt to there i know like in terms of food it can be difficult maybe weather food for example like me when i came in south africa bro, it was very difficult for me to have food because like uh, Back in East Africa, we are used to this food, like most organic food, of course. I'm not saying this for in a bad way, but what I mean is that sometimes you get into food that you are not used to. For example, you want to get, let's say from Africa, you went to China. is when you, you need to use to eat those foods, right? So sometimes it's very challenging. Like for in my case, I struggled to adapt to rice until I got rice from Congolese shop, a dinner shop. That's where I got the best rice. Anyway, food is also sometimes a problem. Another problem facing international students is the uh, internship. Now you have done your studies and there are some courses that if you are doing, you need to have, uh, you need to go for experiential learning or internship for you to graduate. For example, in case of my studies, because I'm studying analytical chemistry, you can't complete your diploma in analytical chemistry without internship. You have to go to the industry for one year or six months for you to qualify and you have to write reports and all those stuff, write report, do presentation, do a test, you know, all those stuff for you to qualify. So when it comes to an internship, it's always a challenge in some countries for the international students to get because whenever a country gives a chance for uh, the internship, 
sometimes most of the requirements, number one might be you know, nationals or domestic students, right? So you are an international student, you have completed your classwork, now you need experiential learning, but you don't have somewhere to go. So it's a great challenge facing international students in the area or in the field which require them to go for experiential learning before they graduate. But it is not happening in all the countries, but you have to be aware in the country where you are going to. Another problem that faces international students that I wanted to talk about, okay, we have financial stress, we have adaptability, uh, language, especially language barrier we have also talked about, whereby, you know, you're going to a place whereby you don't understand the language of the, the people in that area. Like, like say here in Africa, there are a lot of tribes with different languages, at least if you go to America, you know, it is English, you go to Spain, it is Spanish, you know, go to Russia, you'll be like a pre uh, previous, you know? <laughs> like you, at least you understand a little bit of Russian, no? Let's say you go to Spain, like, oh, me, I'm Bill Clinton, this, this, blah, blah, you know, at least, but if you're coming to, let's say, in Africa, any country in Africa, whereby you don't understand their domestic languages, I mean, like, uh, their native languages, is very difficult because most of the time you'll be using English and then, you know, things like that. So those are some of the challenges that faces international students and if you are international students and you are watching this video and you are preparing to go and study outside your country, please make sure that you note this and take it serious so that when you go outside there, you know how to face these challenges to overcome them. And last part of this our video I would like to talk about is the life after graduation. So let's say you have graduated, fine, now you want at least a certain kind of job so that you can also pay back to the society, you know. Sometimes it's very difficult to get a job, but this also depends on the course that you're studying. You know, for example, someone is studying chemistry or sciences and someone is studying laws, you know, and someone is studying social sciences. I think someone who is studying pure science can get a job very quick, depending on the criteria also, let's say performance, things like that so don't be guaranteed that immediately you finishes or, or you finish as work classes or you graduate you are going to get a job bros no it's not like that sometimes you can work until your souls get tired get worn out sometimes you can look for a job until that looking for a job become a job itself right things like that so you just pray to god that immediately you finishes and uh, you get a job and in this case i will give some advices like when you are international students you go outside there be open-minded be wise when i say be wise it's not academic wise know the area know the system of that country know how things work okay have friends these friends are the ones who will lift you when things goes wrong or you need a certain help is this or your friends will will help you another thing if you go to a certain country to study please look people from your country it's very very important don't be just be alone like no you want to be alone you walk alone no if you walk alone you will take decades and decades to reach remember when people are united they do a lot of things but if you are in a single person it might be difficult so if you go somewhere please look your people if they are participating in some activities participate with them so that if it reaches your turn they can also assist you another thing if you go to study outside the moment you arrive in that country, check your documents like your passport and the study permit, go to a police station, let them be certified one so that you work with the certified documents and then leave behind your original documents so that whenever a police officers are doing a random checkup, they can find you with your certified documents. If they don't find you with none, if they find you with none, then they will take you to the police station, then you'll blame police for no reason while the problem was on your side. Also, there are these things whereby in every international school or in any institution, there's uh, organizations which cover international students. Like here at TUT, we have one called ISO, which is International Student Organization. It is a very good um, organization which covers us as international students. It is through that organizations that uh, we are expressing or expressing our views and challenges they help us to solve. Actually, there are even trips, we do go for trips, sleepover and things like that. So it's very nice 
to join such organizations. From there also you make friends with people from different countries. You try to learn things which are even beyond your scope of, let's say, your course. So it's very important. Another thing, bro, there are people who are looking for that chance to go and study outside. If you are joking with that chance, you are doing, you are like digging a grave, okay? So if you go out there to study, study because there are people who are looking for that chance, but they, are, they were not fortunate. I'll use the term fortunate to get that chance, okay? So make sure you study hard so that one day when you go back to your country, at least you go back with something. When you are making friends, be very wise. Don't have anybody to be your friend. The friends will can lead you to darkness and the friends can also lead you to the brighter side, okay? So choose wisely, choose wisely and be selective on the friends that you have. If some friends you realize are taking on the bad side, please, just leave such friends and focus. It's rather you be alone on the right track than being in a company of bad people, right? They say, which says like that.